lot of teachers said, I like doing their math, I like the math and all that kind of stuff, but listen, my principal cares about the language and literacy scores. They don't, if I'm doing all this math, I don't know what's going to happen, and you better talk to them, because if my literacy scores go da 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 you know, all, very concerned about this kind of stuff. So what we did was we gave the, these kids, all in both groups, control group and this building blocks group, a, we collected letter recognition as a quick measure of that kind of literacy, and then we were more interested in oral language, actually. So we did the Renfrew bus story assessment. Real quickly, you just tell a kid a story with these pictures, and then you ask the child to tell it back to you. That's it. And you got a bunch of measures. How many keywords did they use? What was their sentence length? What was the complexity of their sentences? How independent were they? In other words, if you had to keep asking, is there more, is there more to tell? Low independence score. Okay? Um, how attentive were, were they and how long did they take to tell a story? All we wanted was no significant difference. We, didn't, we, we weren't teaching these skills. We just wanted to prove to the teachers that mathematics involves enough thinking and language that the kids would not suffer at all in their language and literacy scores. And that's what we found. Letter recognition didn't differ significantly at all. Even though they spent a little less time on letter recognition, they spent a little time on geometry, and that probably helped. The bus story, no significant difference on the sentence length, the attention they spent, or the time of the story. But shockingly, delightfully for us, significant differences in favor of the math kids on three other bus story measures. They were significantly higher on telling, uh, uh, using the key words that were identified as 35 key words, vocabulary terms from the study. They were higher on the complexity of their sentences, probably because in our math curriculum, we're always asking the kids, tell me why. How do you know? How else could you do it? And they got to dig down to explain those kind of things, right? And then finally, the largest effect was on independence. They were used to, to coming up and being expected to explain things. And so they told the story without the assessor half, having to prompt them every time to tell more. So, and it, oral language is very important. I'm sure you agree, but I love the little story of, of one of our girls had just finished her first week of school. She goes home and her mother told her teacher that she comes home and tells her mother, I'm just wasting my time. I can't read, I can't write, and they won't let me talk. So we don't want that. We want them talking, all right? And we think that the reason they talk so much, again, is the power of asking why. Anne, a preschool teacher in Boston, says, you present problems and they figure out what to do. Then you ask them what process they use. I'm amazed. They learn to explain their thinking. They use this knowledge to answer science questions and solve arguments with each other. They really do critical thinking. Asking how do you know, starting in pre-K, is very possible. What about literacy again? Large-scale research predicting uh, school success shows that early literacy scores predict later reading, but are later reading only. Early math predicts later math and later reading. There's something fundamental about the thinking that kids do in a good early math program that helps multiple areas, right? Particularly for kids from low-income communities and uh, ethnic groups 